Just because you're short on time doesn't mean you can't make progress. Here's how to make gains. Welcome back. Now real Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching, not one of those medical doctors that you hear so much about nowadays. A real doctor who can help you get jacked. Anyways, today we're talking about time efficiency hacks within the gym. If you're busy and don't have much time to train, here are some hacks to make your training in the gym more time efficient. In this video, I'll be heavily drawing on a recently published review paper that looked at strategies to make your training more time efficient for those who don't have much time to train. Check it out in the description. First up, don't fall into the trap of thinking that you need to do a lot of sets in order to make any appreciable muscle growth gains, right? As little as five sets a week per muscle group can still yield appreciable amounts of muscle growth. So if you don't have time to do the recommended 10 to 20 or 15 to 25 sets per week per muscle group, don't worry. Even doing as little as five sets a week can still yield good hypertrophy. On the flip side, while you don't have to do many sets to see hypertrophy gains, one thing you will want to push in your training if you're busy and don't have much time is how close to failure you train. By taking each set to failure, you're making each set more stimulative. When you compare a set taken to five repetitions in reserve, for example, where you could have done five more reps before hitting failure, and a set taken to failure, the set taken to failure can cause up to two times as much growth. So if you don't have much time, make sure you take each set at least to failure and potentially even beyond failure. This hasn't received much attention within the evidence, but there is a potential that going past failure can further increase the stimulus that you see from training. Just make sure you take each set close to failure, to failure, or beyond failure. This is especially important if you're busy and just don't have much time to train and get those sets in. Next up, regarding exercise selection, use compound exercises. Compound exercises are exercises that involve multiple joints and a lot of muscle groups at once. Think of the squat, think of the bench press, think of the Romanian deadlift, think of the pull-up. These exercises do a great job of targeting a variety of muscle groups across your body all at once. If instead you were doing isolation work, you might have to spend a lot more time in the gym on average to get the same stimulus and the same muscle growth. Wherever possible, prioritize compound multi-joint movements. While we're on the topic of exercise selection, here's what I want you to keep in mind. Stack loaded machines where you can simply select the weight and do your set and dumbbells are your best friends. Compare this with a barbell exercise. When you're doing a barbell deadlift, you'll have to spend a while to get the barbell in place, to set up the platform potentially, to get the plates on each side, to add a collar, etc. Compare this with a dumbbell exercise where you can simply grab the dumbbells and get going, or a stack loaded machine where you can simply select the weight and start with your exercise. So generally, dumbbell exercises, stack loaded machine exercises, cable exercises, are all great options as compared to something like a barbell exercise. The good news is it does not seem to matter whether you use machines or free weights for hypertrophy as long as you get the work in. And while we're on the topic of exercise selection, generally try to pick bilateral exercises. Those are exercises that are going to have you train both limbs, both arms or both legs, at the same time. For example, let's compare a dumbbell bent over row wherein you use both arms at the same time, you train both sides at the same time, to a single arm dumbbell row on a bench. With a single arm dumbbell row, you'll have to do twice as many sets. And while you may say, I could just do my sets during the rest time, what ends up happening typically is that it does take longer to do single arm or single leg exercises as opposed to just doing them bilaterally. Next, let's talk about warming up. The truth is, if you're busy and you don't have much time to train, spending too much time on your warm up can really hinder how much progress you make. If you're spending 30 minutes of your 60 minute session just warming up to actually train, those 30 minutes were largely wasted as far as hypertrophy goes. Ultimately, what grows muscle is hard sets taken close to failure. So we want to maximize how much of your time is spent doing those hard sets. Here's how I recommend warming up if you're busy and don't have much time. At most, do one to three warm-up sets before starting an exercise and the work sets. At most, do one to three warm-up sets before you start the work sets for a given exercise. As you're warming up, specifically only do the target exercise. If you're growing relatively heavy or it's your first exercise for a given area of the body, for example, it's your first upper body exercise for that session, stick to the higher end of that set range recommendation. Likewise though, if it's your third exercise for your upper body and you're feeling pretty warm already, you can do zero or even just one warm-up set and that'll be sufficient. For set one, pick between 30 and 50% of your working weight for that exercise and do it for about eight to 12 reps. For set two, pick about 70% of your working weight and do that for three to five reps. Finally, for set three, Pick around your working weight, if not a little bit above it, and do that for one or two reps. This set, this third set, will provide you with something called a post-activation performance enhancement effect. 
Essentially, by doing a few reps or just a single rep with a relatively heavy load, your subsequent performance is improved. So I would generally recommend doing this third warm-up set even if you're already relatively warm. Psychologically, it can also be helpful in terms of making sure that you're ready for that heavy weight you're about to lift. On the final note with regards to warm-ups, generally avoid stretching. You will get more flexible simply by lifting, and a recent review paper found similar range of motion improvements or flexibility improvements, whether you're lifting weights or stretching. So avoid stretching unless you're specifically going for an increase in flexibility. For example, you're trying to get a split. But stretching itself is not a good idea if you're pressed for time and just need to get a hypertrophy stimulus from that session. Now, let's talk about special techniques you can use within the gym in order to make your training more time efficient. The first one and the biggest one is going to be antagonistic paired supersets. In antagonist paired supersets, you'll essentially superset two exercises that involve opposing motions and opposing muscle groups. For example, you could superset some biceps and tricep work since they work to flex the elbow and extend the elbow respectively. Likewise, you could superset a chest and back exercise or you could superset a quadriceps and hamstring exercise. Or you can take it even further and simply superset any two exercises that don't have any overlap and that are not too systemically fatiguing. For example, I wouldn't recommend supersetting a squat with a lateral raise. While these two exercises have no overlap in terms of the muscle groups being involved necessarily, there is going to be a substantial amount of systemic fatigue, being out of breath from that squat going into that lateral raise. However, supersetting something like a dumbbell lateral raise and a calf raise there is no overlap in terms of muscle groups involved, and there's also not a substantial amount of fatigue being generated. By supersetting two different muscle groups and two different exercises that don't overlap, you can often save as much as 50 to 60% of time within your session. If you're interested in antagonist paired supersets, check out this whole video I made about them here. The second kind of technique I would recommend if you're trying to save time and you need to get a hypertrophy stimulus is drop sets and myo reps. Specifically, we have meta-analysis looking at the effects of drop sets on muscle growth as compared to traditional training. What it showed across six studies was essentially the same hypertrophy whether you're doing drop sets or traditional sets, just straight sets. Now, the caveat is with drop sets, people generally spend about 50 to 70% less time in the gym. And so if you're someone who's busy, drop sets are a great option to get similar hypertrophy with much less time. I have a whole video on drop sets here, so check it out if you're interested. The long story short is simply do a hard set pretty close to failure and then drop the weight by 20% for each subsequent drop set. Do not rest between the first set and the drop set and subsequent drop set and so on. Now let's talk about how you structure your session in terms of exercise order and so on. First, I want you to think about how systemically fatiguing a given exercise is. An exercise like the squat, for example, is highly systemically fatiguing. You'll be out of breath, you'll be taxed overall after a hard set. What I want you to do is to intersperse systemically fatiguing exercises with exercises that aren't systemically fatigued. The reason for this is, generally, your rest time will increase if you're dealing with a high level of systemic fatigue. When you're doing a squat and then an RDL and then a split squat, for example, your rest time between sets can get incrementally longer as that systemic fatigue builds up. Whereas if instead you, for example, did a squat, then a light curl, then a leg press, that would then alleviate that systemic fatigue a little bit. I have a whole video on exercise order here, so check that out if you're interested. Now, I'm seemingly about to contradict myself, but hear me out. If you're in a busy gym and you don't have much time to train, be flexible with your exercise order. Keep in mind what I just said about interspersing, you know, systemically fatiguing with non-systemically fatiguing exercises. But if you're in a busy gym and you can't actually follow your prescribed exercise order, just do whatever you can. You only have so much time in the gym, so if it means doing your rear delts before your chest, for example, that's fine. Ultimately, exercise order doesn't seem to play a huge role with regards to hypertrophy, all else being equal. We have a meta-analysis on the topic here, and broadly speaking, it just doesn't seem like there's a huge effect of exercise order on hypertrophy. So if you need to, you're in a busy gym, stuff is being taken up, don't don't strictly stick to your prescribed exercise order. Be flexible. My final piece of advice on session management and exercise order is to do a hard set right before you leave the gym. What does this mean? Well, when you're about to do your last set, make sure you have all your stuff ready and you're ready to go. Obviously, if you're gonna take a shower, that's a different thing. 
But still, if you're about to leave the gym, make sure you have your bag with you already so you can simply do a set and leave. You don't have to go upstairs. You can use that rest time that you spent resting, you know, a few sets ago to go get your stuff and then you save an extra couple minutes typically. This is really helpful when you have, say, a couple extra sets at the end of your session and you're not quite sure if you can fit them in. By going and getting your stuff and being ready to go right after your last set, you can do your last hard, heavy set and then leave the gym. Before I give you some takeaways, let me tell you one common mistake I do see with regards to busy people within the gym, and that's excessively cutting down on rest times. Now, don't get me wrong, I've made a whole video on rest times here and you can see it. You can absolutely make gains with short rest times between sets. However, in order to do so and to get the same muscle growth that you would get from longer rest times between sets, you would need to do more sets to make up for it. So don't just rush through your session and try and get it done as quickly as possible. Use all the time you have at your disposal for that given session. Rest for as long as you need to between sets, ideally, to roughly replicate last set's performance. Here are some quick takeaways. Use intensity techniques like drop sets and antagonistic paired supersets in order to save up to 50 or more percent of time within the gym. Certain exercises will work better when you're trying to be time efficient. Generally, these will be bilateral, using both limbs at the same time. These will be stack loaded machines, cables, or dumbbell exercises. And these will be compound exercises where you're training a lot of muscle groups at once. When you're pressed for time, don't be afraid to take each set very close to to failure or beyond failure to get as much stimulus out of each set as you possibly can. Likewise, even if you can only do say five sets a week, don't be afraid. As few as five sets a week can still be enough to yield a meaningful increase in muscle size over time. Finally, as far as overall session management goes, do not overdo the warm-up. The warm-up is time spent not growing, essentially. You could be spending your time doing more hard sets and growing more muscle. So generally, be a minimalist about your warm-up. Likewise, try and order exercises so that you're not too fatigued systemically going from one exercise into the next. However, do not be strict about your exercise order. If, for example, your gym is busy and you can't get a specific piece of kit, don't be afraid to switch up your exercise order if you need to. That's the video. If you enjoy the video, please comment, like, subscribe. We're trying to get to 10,000. I know a lot of you aren't subscribed yet, so if you could subscribe, it'd be hugely helpful. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace.